Hey friend, David here from Learn Christmas Lighting. So great to be with you today. And today we're going to uh, learn about X-Lights. So this is the quick start. This is my 2020 edition that I'm recording here uh, with the latest version of X-Lights this time. And I want to show you guys everything that I wish I knew. So if you came from the playlist, you may have gone through an introduction and an installing video. And now it's time to lay out our display. Now, before we get here, if this is your first time in X-Lights, then you just started up and you should see a screen that looks a lot like this. We're here on the controllers tab. We also have the layout and sequencer tabs available. Now, if you've used X-Lights before, you've been playing around with it, you've been experimenting, whatever. If you do want to start from scratch right here under show directory, you can go to change permanently um, or in this case, um, restore to permanent, etc. And so that would bring you back to your show that you had before. Then I'm going to change permanently because I want to go to my 2020 tutorials and open up a brand new file for those who are just starting here. Now, the very first thing you want to do in X lights, and, and this is always the first thing before we can make lights happen on our house, is we want to go to the layout tab and set up what the light show is going to actually look like on our house or wherever you're doing this, maybe on your business, whatever else. So the very first thing to do is background image. Um, I highly, highly, highly recommend using a background image. In this case, I have a stock photo that I use uh, for my tutorials. That is just kind of a generic, uh, maybe overly perfect house, but, you know, a good example of what a lot of people have as their home. So I just went down here to background image. I selected this three-dot menu, which pops up when you click on it. And then I was able to go find that image, and it now comes in to my layout. Now I can go ahead, if I want, I could set the width or height, but I really want to set the transparency here, or rather the brightness. That's that's the first thing. So I'm going to kick that way down um, so that I can really see what I'm working with, so I can see the lights as we begin to bring them in. Now, if you have a photo, if you've done this before, or you've got at least a photo with uh, regular Christmas lights on your house from previous years or anything like that, then uh, what... I would do is use that photo because it allows you to see exactly where you hung stuff before. Okay. And so, um, that's a real key thing to do, but if you don't have that, don't worry about it. It's not a problem. However, um, the more accurate you are with this layout as you build it, the more accurate your show is going to play back and the better it will look. So even if, and this is a cool thing about x -Lace, even if you don't have it all set up perfectly from uh, when you first create things, you can go back in, change the background image later once you have the lights up and you've tested it maybe, and line everything up all perfect. And uh, if you redo all your sequences, just save them all again, re-render them, um, then it will update your display layout. So that's just a quick tip there to get things uh, really accurate, which can help when you're doing animations over your whole home. But before we run any animations on our home, we've got to have some lights. And so across the top here, we've got this section where we bring in lights. And there's all sorts of different types of lights. Pretty much any type of pixel or, or light that you can get, you can bring in up here. Okay. Now, some of the key ones that you're going to use is, you know, we've got things like arches and candy canes. We've got things like um, channel blocks that we can use for windows, circles, um, custom models, which are, if I click on that, I'll just show you. It uh, pulls up a little custom model thing. Maybe not. We're able to define a completely custom model in x lights but I'm going to get rid of that, so I just press delete. We can get images, icicles, matrices, um, lines of all sorts, spheres and stars and trees and window frames and wreaths import and download. Now download's a pretty key one here just to bring you through that. That's if, if we press on this, it takes a minute and then it pops up. That's kind of what I was meaning to do with custom, but it's here under download. Um, and what we can do here is once this does pop up and we click a model, it loads um, some of the models for things that you can buy. So Boscoyo Studio is in here and also uh, Gilbert Engineering, yeah. Gilbert Engineering is also in here. It says Gilbert Engineering. 
<laughs> should be Gilbert, but that's all right. Um, so we have those two as well as some different DMX fixtures and, and models um, that are available. So um, super, super key there that uh, you can check whether to download or not, etc. cetera. Um, but you can find everything you can buy from these brands in here and select them and insert them into your display. So about inserting things into your display, I'm just going to get rid of, whoops, going to get rid of these Gilbert spheres that I've just made. And as you probably saw, making your layout is, is pretty simple. It's really as simple as just pressing any of these options, like for a matrix here, then clicking and dragging, and being able to size that. You click once to, to set it, and then you can click and drag these boxes to size it. Um, and there are a lot of other controls as well. We can rotate it if we need to. We can go ahead and, and shrink it together, build it up, etc. Now, that's not all we can do, okay? So let's go ahead and add a couple things quick. I'll add a matrix there. I'll add in some poly lines. I like to use these for my roof lines. When you're first adding things, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, press escape to end a model like a poly line. You can make another one. It doesn't have to be perfect because any of this you can go in and fix later. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and add a star. And maybe go ahead and add a mega tree. Awesome. So this gives us some models to work with and to show you how the layout of X lights works more or less. And so we're able to go in here and select any of these models, and we're gonna see some different settings over here that are really important. Another key thing while we're here is the save button. Press it often. Um, just in case you would have a crash or anything like that. Doesn't happen often, but when it does, you do lose things, so you wanna save. Now, there's some different options we see here. Um, under this main area, we're able to name it. First of all, if you need to name it, I like to name all of my models different things so I know what in the world they are. Um, then we have some options here like strings, nodes per string, uh, points, which is specific to the star model, and starting location. Okay, these are important, but you don't have to get them perfect right away. Like anything in this, you can always update it later if you're not sure exactly how your display is going to look uh, at the actual season. So you can go ahead, you can move that around, say, okay, I know I'm going to wire it from the top center and go clockwise, done, etc. Um, for something like a mega tree, we see here that we get options like the strings and nodes per string and strands per string are all options that we have. So strings, in, in the case of a matrix or a mega tree or something like that, are different basically controller outputs that you're plugging strings into. And again, if, if you're just starting and you're like, I don't know what that is, then just leave it alone. But, but it's the number of outputs, so this one is a 16 string, plugs into 16 outputs. Then it tells us that there's 50 nodes plugged into every string. So each, basically a tree like this would probably have a controller at the bottom, and each of these 16 strings the whole way around would plug in, and 50 nodes gets you to the top, and then it stops there. Now, I could go in here, and I could do two strands per string. And when I do that, not only does it look funky, but but this is now an up and back type model. So if I actually took this to eight and then took this to 100, I should get something that looks identical to what I had before I started messing with these numbers. Because now I made it eight outputs from the controller. Again, if this is over your head, don't worry, or just watch it again. Um, nodes per string is now 100 because strands per string, the, the basically the amount of up and backs we're doing is two. So it's going up the tree and then it's coming back down all the way before it ends. Okay, that's that's super important. Um, other things that, that you may want to do in here are things such as setting the brightness, um, et cetera, et cetera. We'll get into more about controller setup a little bit later. Okay, now if we're working with something like a polyline here, you are able to go in here and set the number of nodes uh, to be different as needed. Like for this roof line, maybe I know that I only need 35 nodes to cover this. And you're able to go ahead as well and uh, really mess with how, how things work in here and uh, 
move around as as needed and so that's something definitely worth uh looking deeper in the manual or looking at tutorials like uh i have more inside of learn christmas lighting academy and stuff like that uh that you can you can check out but that's the basics um layout really doesn't have to be any more confusing than that you simply bring in your different props things you'll want to do and I recommend doing this uh, early in the season, you know, December maybe for next year or early in the year. Start to look at your house and just go in here and bring in different models and see how things lay out, see how they look. Start to play around even before you buy any lights so that you can see if things will work or not on your house and start to determine numbers. Um, as long as you have a good, you know, picture of your house that's fairly flat and straight on, uh, these models are pretty accurate. So if it looks good, if the amount of lights you're using, etc., looks good on this model, and, and you took this from, you know, a pretty average perspective that somebody would watch your show, then it's probably going to look right in your show. Um, so with that, guys, go ahead and press save. As always, very, very important. And then I'm going to see you in the next video where we're going to dive into sequencing a little bit. And then we're going to go back, set up the networks, talk about scheduling, et cetera, et cetera. I'll see you there. Thanks.